Now, if you are watching this video, you've done some vector calculus, and there is only one reason to learn vector calculus, and that is to take objects and yeet them across paddocks like this little dot right here. So that's what this video is about, projectile motion. So this video is not going to be like a bunch of calculations and derivatives and antiderivatives and things like that. What we're going to be doing is taking a look at projectiles and what happens under a bunch of different conditions. We're also going to be looking at the vectors, displacement, acceleration and velocity and how they all work within this space as well. Now the applet that I'm going to be using here, I did just make it, but I am going to make it available. So just go into the description, click the link and it'll open in your browser and you can play along. So you might want to pause the video and take a look at all the little check boxes I've got here and sliders I've got here and then we'll get started. So we have a body and that is the B for body. We're going to throw that across our paddock. Now when you are throwing something when it comes to projectile motions there are two things that you need to be considering. There is the launch angle and there is the initial velocity. How hard you throw this object. So let's look at our initial yeet. Okay, so we could change the power of that initial yeet. We could also change the angle of that initial yeet. Important to note, our initial um, angle of 12 degrees is that angle right there right there. So positive direction of the x-axis and we're going to use that 12 degree angle right there. Don't measure the angle against the y-axis, we never do that. All right, so if we change our initial velocity, change our angle, all right, let's launch this projectile. Boom. All right, and you can see that it's sort of going across like that. Now if we come back to here, oh, let's try again. If we go back to here, let's turn a trace on so we can just have a record of where it goes. Whoop. All right, that's pretty good. All right, and let's stop. We'll bring that time back to zero and we'll change our launch angle and we'll throw it again. Now, I'm not showing you anything that you're not familiar with. You've taken a ball and thrown it across a paddock before, so you get a sense of if you change the angle, if you change the velocity, different things are going to happen if you change those initial conditions. Now, of course, uh, the angle and the velocity aren't the only initial conditions we could change. Uh, so if we go back to time zero, this was our last launch. If we were to be on a different planet, let's say we were to go to Jupiter, with a different gravity, 24.5 meters per second per second, gravity pulling us down here, and we were to launch that, you can see that we make some pretty good progress at the start, but we don't get nearly as high and as far as when we were on Earth. Um, if we were to change and go, uh, let's stop that. If we were to change and we were to go to the moon, you can see, whoa, we're really taken off there. And that's going to go much, much further than when we were on Earth. It's this gravity value that's going to change uh, what happens to our projectile given the same initial angle and velocity. Uh, for the most part, though, um, most of the maths I have seen people undertaking takes place on Earth. And we have a gravity of... 9.8. So that number's on formula sheets. It's important for you to hold on to. So now that we're back home on Earth, we've initialized all of this. Uh, our initial velocity at the moment is 39 meters per second. Our angle is 54 degrees. We're going to talk about that acceleration number, that 9.8. Important to note, when you yeet this thing, as you start from here and you Move your hand like this. You are accelerating the object. But the moment you let go of it, you are no longer accelerating the object. There is no force being exerted by you on the object once you let go. 
In fact, the only force being exerted on the object once you let go is acceleration, is the acceleration due to gravity. So, acceleration looks like that. 9.8 meters per second per second directly down. Let's see what that looks like when we launch it. How will that change when we launch it? Okay. So you can see that the acceleration as we launch this thing does not change ever. That makes sense. We're on Earth. Launching our projectile doesn't change gravity. Gravity is a constant. It's 9.8 meters per second per second. Now, people find this confusing when they start talking about this because they think, wait, it's moving really fast here. And then when it's up here, it's, it's not going up. It's not going, it's, it's slowing down. And then once it starts coming down, it starts speeding up again. Why is the acceleration constant? Now, you could, if you're talking about that, you're talking about fast and slow and speeding up. You're not talking about acceleration, you're talking about velocity. And yes, the velocity of this object does change over time. So let's go back and let's talk about our velocity of this object over time. Now, in order to do that, I've just set my initial velocity to be a little dotted line here because at time zero, hopefully you can see that blue line has appeared underneath the green line. There is our initial velocity. You yeet the object and your initial velocity is straight up that way, right? Let's animate this and watch as it goes. I'm just gonna remove the uh, initial green one just so we can see just the blue one. Let's follow it. Go. Okay. This is really interesting. Our velocity does change over time, just as we thought it did. If we go back to the start again, our initial velocity is quite long. Okay. And then if we stop here, you can see the initial velocity has definitely gotten shorter and the direction the velocity is in has changed as well. If we keep going, you can see the velocity is getting longer and the direction it's going in has changed as well. So acceleration is remaining constant, but that velocity definitely changes over time, which is what we've experienced when we have thrown these projectiles around the place. Now, I find it interesting to break velocity into its components. And when we do the maths, we'll do that. So breaking velocity into its comp components, you can see we've got our I components there, our J components there. Let's start this thing up again. Okay, and you can see, do, 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 do. Okay, at the peak here, you can see that our velocity on the upwards is almost zero. You can see that our velocity in this direction, wait, 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 initialize. I just wanna check something here. Let's take a look at how, what the magnitude of the velocity is in the I direction. Okay, 22.92. Uh, let's look at the magnitude here. Uh, 31.55. Okay, if we changed the um, launch angle, those would be different values, obviously. All right, let's, let's start that up. Okay, so as expected, it's not, ch it's changing in um, the J direction, right? It, it's getting smaller as we go, because it's not rising as much. But that 22.92, that velocity in the I direction is remaining constant, 22.92. Uh, just continuing here. Oh, wow. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether we're right at the start, we're right at the top, we're right at the end. That velocity in the I direction remains constant and 22.92. Now, that is true for this uh, mathematical simulation and 95% of the mathematics that you will be expected to do. It's not true in the real world because in the real world, we have something called wind resistance and that wind resistance 
would put a force, would exert a force on the object as it goes this way, which would start slowing it down in the I direction. However, when we do this stuff, as your physics teachers will say, we launch frictionless um, spherical cows, which means that there is no wind resistance. So there is nothing to slow it down in the I direction. All right, initialize. Okay, so at the moment what we have, uh, we'll get rid of those velocity components. We have two vectors to describe this. We have the acceleration straight down, which is always 9.8. We have this uh, velocity vector, which never changes in the I component, but changes in the J component. And finally, we have a displacement vector, which is so incredibly boring. Okay, let's just initialize and start that. Okay, I'll just stop there. All right, this arrow here, this vector is our displacement vector. It just tells us where our object is in relation to the origin at any given time. So not overly exciting, very self-explanatory here. If we know where the object is, we know the displacement vector at any given time. Okay, um, what's interesting? Well, I guess um, when people yeet things across paddocks, they like to know when or where they're going to hit the ground. So our displacement vector, the I component of it will tell you where the object has hit the ground um, right about there when the J component is equal to zero. If you know the J component is equal to zero of your displacement vector, then the I component will tell you how far the object has traveled. As long as your object started at the origin. If your object didn't start at the origin, then your displacement vector is telling you something different. Now there is no reason that we need to launch things from the origin. So if I change my initial position, if I were to launch from the like top of this cliff, uh, let's just get rid of that trace. If we launch from the top of that cliff and we start that here, that displacement vector is still measuring from the origin. Um, so depending on how you set up your question, what question you're answering, you need to be able to interpret what that displacement vector is actually doing. In fact, uh, a lot of people find it useful, interesting, helpful when they're doing questions where objects aren't launching from the origin. They just move the origin up to where the object is launching from and deal with it from there. Uh, but that is something for when we dive into this maths. Now, of course, we can launch the object from there. We could like move the initial position of our object over to here somewhere and launch from somewhere there. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, what if I've been launching from left to right? Finally, this is, this is the end. What if I wanted to launch from right to left? Um, this is useful because I've seen questions in the past where you launch an object from over here, you launch an object from over here, and you see where they bonk into each other. So if you were trying to take a, rather than launching from here to here, if you were trying to launch from here to here, you just need to pick your initial position appropriately. Okay, let's pick an initial position a bit lower. Let's put it over there, move our time over there a bit. Okay, uh, initialize all that because now it just looks like nonsense. There is my initial position. Now, if I want to launch it the other way, very, very straightforward, I can just change my launch angle beyond 90 degrees. And there we go. And my launch angle now is 125 degrees and we can launch and cross our fingers. And you can see our projectile heads over in that direction. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I know I've gone through a lot of things. In the next videos, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of equations and some maths, but it's important to keep in mind everything we've seen here and refer back to this little applet in this video when you're doing those questions with all of those equations. Because having this idea 
of um, what's actually happening while you're doing the maths is going to be really important.